The great thing about these videos that I'm doing is that we're kind of in it together for the ride. You know, learning together, experimenting together. Who knows what's gonna happen? But if I fuck up, at least it's not on your dime, it's on my dime. And uh, we, we learn something valuable together. It's cool. Yeast is going to town on this thing. This is such a big beer. I need to add a little more yeast and sugar to this because I don't want to stall out and be too sweet and uh, be stuck with like a 7% beer. And for how much starting sugars I had in this, it, that's not gonna work. So I'm gonna add some corn sugar, uh, which is basically glucose and yeast love glucose. I'm gonna add two and a half ounces of corn sugar. That's about three and a half percent of my entire grain bill. You'll see or hear about that people will add corn sugar into their boil for like double IPAs and big alcoholic beers such as this. I think it's better to add it at this stage because the yeast has now had a chance to eat on some of the longer sugar chains rather than focus on a really highly fermentable sugar first, then crap out where it won't have a chance to actually eat some of these longer sugar chains first. Now it's had a chance to kind of consume some of those. I'm gonna add that now. I'm also gonna add a little bit of yeast. I have some dried USO5 here. Sprinkle some of that in just to give a little more of a boost, give a little more um, yeast in there to help it along the way. Cause it's, it's gonna be really stressed. So you can boil this and you probably should that just to kind of sanitize it and mix all the corn sugar into uh, the solution. I have heard and read and done research and you can add this dry. So I'm gonna try it, I've never done it before. I'm not that worried about contamination because there's gonna be so much alcohol in this that I just don't think any wild stuff can survive. Most of that wild bad bacteria has a really hard time with alcohol present. So I think I'm gonna be okay. Um, you know, if for some reason it gets contaminated, then you know, I won't do it again. So it's also somewhat of an experiment in that sense. Two and a half ounces of corn sugar. Wow, it seems like a lot of corn sugar. I'm gonna chicken out and do only two ounces. Seems like a lot for a one gallon batch. All right, that's two ounces of corn sugar. I'm gonna eyeball the yeast. I think a gram is good usually for a full batch uh, of a one gallon batch for around a 1050 starting gravity. And that was probably under a gram, just kind of eyeballing it. Uh, I'm gonna give this, give this a little bit of a swirl. I don't wanna like fully oxygenate it again cause it's already kind of done that part of it. But I do want to get this somewhat mixed up. So I'm going to give it just a gentle little swirl here. So you can really, there's a, a proper way to feed this and we can really bump up the gravity. But you're, when you do like proper feeding, you're adding like a 10, what was it? I think you're adding like a, a 1.300 starting gravity of, of a solution into it. But there is a great article done by Chris Colby. I'll link below about how to feed big beer. Uh, I'm not trying to feed it necessarily. I'm just trying to make sure the yeast eat and attenuate this down a little bit so it doesn't get stuck at a higher finishing gravity. That's my main goal here. So that's good. I'm happy with that. Put it back on. Uh, yeah, I'll check, I'll check your gravity re reading here in about two weeks from now. So I'm gonna take a hydrometer reading today for my Imperial Stout. Now this is a great, great tool. I don't think it'll, it usually doesn't fit my one gallon jugs, unfortunately. Ugh, it's so annoying. But it's great, because you can just put it in there, and you just jiggle it like this, underneath the wort, or the beer, and it fills up. And some people even put their hydrometer in this, like so, and it fills up with it, and you get your reading. But it didn't fit for me. I do have a wine thief, but it's also too thick. I think I might need a turkey baster, but those only go like down to there when I put it in a one gallon jug. So I'm kind of out of luck for one gallon jugs. If anyone has a recommendation, please comment below because for one gallon jugs, it's hard to get the uh, beer out to test. The only other option I really have is to do it this way and I hate doing it this way. There has to be a better way. I know there is. This is my siphoning too, but I just put my siphoner in to like bottle beer with or transfer. Well, I just fill this up like so and I just pour it into here. It's not the best way at all to do this. It's, it really isn't. So that's floating. Looks like I'm at 1042. So that's obviously higher than I would think it would be, considering I had a sugar and yeast. I thought I might get down to 1030, 1020. 
That's okay. Not a big deal. It has been two weeks, but I'm gonna let it sit for another week. Uh, I might try and formulate something else to get this down. I know I can add Beano. I've done it before. This Beano has enzymes in it that can actually uh, break down the long sugar chains these couldn't get to and uh, lower the gravity a bit more. So I can add this. I will do another check next week. If it hasn't gone down at all, I will add Beano for about another week and then bottle from there because this should get it to about 1030 or so. I did it for my champagne beer and uh, it worked well. So. We'll see. Here's hoping. All right, I'm at 1040 still. It's a little harder than I want. I'm gonna add some vino. I'm, I'm only gonna do like, I think like half a tablet or less because I don't want this to get like rippingly down low to like 1020. 1030 is what I'm going for. I want a little residual sweetness still. I'm gonna transfer it to a secondary to get it off the yeast and then uh, add the vino. All right, looks like I have about a half a gallon here. Totally fine with me. Let's get some Beano. I didn't sanitize this last time, a Beano tab. I won't do it this time either. I don't think it matters. There's a lot of alcohol in this already. So that's crushed up into a pretty fine powder. I can do all of it. So that's probably about half the pill, maybe, maybe. Gently gonna stir that in. Good. I'm going to let that go for another uh, two, three weeks or so and uh, test the gravity then. It looks like I'm going to have about four bottles, maybe five if I'm lucky. It's all right. It'll make it that more uh, meaningful to drink, I guess. So the Beano didn't do anything this time. Uh, I'm still at 1040. That's where I have been for the last uh, month and a half or a month or whenever, how long I brewed this. I don't even know the dates anymore. I think I added the Beano sometime really early August. Uh, uh, maybe late July, and that's uh, interesting because last time the Beano I added, it dropped it down a little bit. All right, so 1040 it is. It's still around 10-11% beer. I'm okay with that. So this is a high alcohol beer. I thought about it for the last week. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the thing where you take a little bit of fresh wort, a little bit of the beer, the finished beer, and add some yeast to it and let the yeast acclimate to this harsh environment it's about to be in. For about two three days and then add this whole uh mixture into back into this right at bottling with the priming sugar and it should be able to handle the high alcohol just need 15 millimeters of this i have about 15 in here a little over that was what i did for the last time for actually less amount than this and it worked out great so i'm doing it again so that's 40 milliliters it's actually probably more than i need but uh it's fine can't hurt I'm just gonna eyeball this. I can, you can actually get the yeast out. So I think that amount should be fine. I just sprinkle a little, a little in there. Give a little swirl here. Yeah, so that should be enough yeast for this tiny amount I'm doing. Cover that tin foil and uh, let's skip ahead three days. I just transferred the uh, stout into this pot to bottle. Here's my little starter that I made about three or four days ago. I think it's been about three days, exactly. I saw some activity actually in this little thing. So I'm gonna pour most of that into there. I made a little more than I needed, so I don't think I need to do all of it. Here's our priming sugar. Yeah, I give that a stir. All right, bottle from there. Okay, these are all bottled. Uh, I'll do a tasting in um, probably three weeks just to see, just to see where it's at. But uh, I think uh, I might do a secondary tasting closer to the holidays, like November, December time. And uh, cause that's what I brewed it for, was for that time. So, uh, all right, yeah, so see you at the first tasting. Do you all see the score to third touchdown? Great. It's early, it's the first game of the year, and I'm already not having a good time at all. That aside, Imperial Stout tasting, early tasting. By the way, I've never done a tasting inside. And why I never do these very often inside is because I hate the echo. The lighting's okay, it's a little yellow. Well, let me adjust it really quickly and see if it's better. That's, that's, uh, that's all right. I'll link the recipe below in the description along with the original brew day as well. So I will also uh, taste this at some point later on. I brewed this for the holidays. 
So it'll probably change, uh, at least that's the idea on paper. Most important thing is, is that I added a chocolate malt and a carafa three after the masher converted. So that way I'm trying to less, lessen the uh, harsh acrid tannins that can come out of putting it in the mash initially. Because it's all roasty and I'm trying to make it as smooth as possible, especially for as big a beer as this is. And the hops I used was Columbus, Chinook, and East Kent Goldings. And the yeast I used was USO5. Got my robot opener. My friend Brett gave this to me for my birthday. I love it. So, moment of truth here. It's been in the bottle for about two weeks now. Uh, I think closer to three, probably. I'm not entirely sure, but somewhere in that range. Oh, it is carbonated. It's good. Well, we'll see if it's over carbonated. It is not over carbonated. It seems like a pretty good level to me. So I'm really glad. This is about 10% beer, 10 and half percent beer, somewhere in that range. And the finishing gravity was 1040. Uh, yeah, nice, nice creamy head to it. So the smell of the bat's nice. I'm not getting hardly any roast at all. A very clean smell to it, actually. I'm not getting any hops, really. There was a slight, 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 slight roast in there. It could actually will see more for the style, but I think it's pretty spot on. Has a nice sort of chocolatey smell, too, actually. Maybe slight coffee notes in there. All right, taste. You can tell it's young. It's good for how young it is. It's boozy. It's a little hot and a little harsh, but not bad for how young it is. It really isn't bad. I'm not getting oxidation. I'm not getting any diacetyl, which is good. Mm, nice creamy mouthfeel. Mouthfeel's the best on this. Uh, man, really, really good. I, I cannot, no, I'm very, very happy with how it's turned out. I did want this to get below 1040, as I did say in the early part of the video. But I think actually ending at 1040 balanced it pretty well. I think going a little under that would have been maybe a little too harsh and a little too hot and a little too boozy. Because uh, there's a sweetness there, but the sweetness is really balanced. I think it would benefit from actually adding a little bit of chocolate or a little bit of coffee to it. You know, especially if you want to look with a dessert. However, I do really think by November, December time, when it's in a bottle for a little bit, I think it's going to end up really nice and well-rounded, really smooth. Uh, I have probably four bottles somewhere in that range, so uh, I'll just savor those. And uh, yeah, I can't complain at all. So yeah, there you go. Uh, until next time, uh, like, subscribe, all that good old fun stuff that everyone does on the YouTubes. And <laughs> get out there and brew some beer and cheers.